Hey there, everybody. Welcome to our new Blacklist video. And this one is a doozy because this one we are talking a lot about the season one finale, the end of, you know, this part of the Berlin saga. I know it continues <laughs> into season two, but in particular, is Berlin's daughter coming back? Is she coming back? <laughs> I mean, there's so many ties to season one already yeah. that are going to be in season 10. So is it possible? There's a lot of interesting ways that this could go. And I think a big question for all of you guys to sort of think about as we're talking through all of this is that how is the Blacklist going to honor the legacy of Berlin, one of their first major big bads in season 10? Is that just going to be... With Sia Malik, who we already know is coming, mm -hmm. or is there something more kind of lurking around the corner that we should sort of expect? But before we get into that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We are here every Friday talking about the Blacklist until it moves to Sundays. <laughs> and then we will be here every Sunday talking about the Blacklist. We are also covering Criminal Minds. So if you're watching that, so are we, yeah. NCIS, Yellowstone, all kinds of good stuff here at the channel. So we would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button and follow us over on Instagram at Matt and Just TV. If you guys are new to the channel, first of all, Welcome. Hello. Second of all, I am Pat. This is Jeff. And we are here with theories. We are here with stuff to talk about. So I'm going to do a reenactment of the past 24 hours trying to figure out everything here with Berlin and, you know, Berlin's daughter, who does not even appear in this episode. But it's just like we're not doing a rewatch of season two. No. We're getting into, you know, the Berlin saga here. <laughs> so this is me pounding my head against the wall. Trying to figure this out with Berlin's daughter and whether or not Zoe could be coming back. Because here, here is the thing. Berlin, you dead. He gone. We, He's we, gone. We don't need to worry about Berlin. However, there's got to be a mechanism to try to find a way to bring something else tied to Berlin back into the show. And Zoe is still out there. Reddington basically gave her an opportunity to start fresh in season two after, you know, basically using her as bait multiple times for Berlin. So ultimately, this is somebody who is still tied to the world of the show, who is still out there. The problem, of course, comes in, what's the justifiable reason to sort of bring a character back who is not some sort of evil, nefarious character, but rather somebody who is tied to you know, a big bad and a story we're already familiar with on a season coming up that is going to be filled with nostalgia. Yeah, because we know that Sia is coming back or is coming here to the task force in some sort of way yeah. that is tied to wanting some answers about her mom and her mom's death or maybe what her mom does. Because, you know, we just watched this episode and we know how Mira dies. So yeah. she ends up in a club where she's on like a walkie talkie with wrestler who's like wrestlers trying to be like, hey, you know, look out kind of thing. Yeah. But it gets all garbled and then she gets her throat slashed by some goon. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. It's not a, a lot more complicated than that. She really was wrong place, wrong time, communicator down, and she got killed because of it. So if C is coming back for answers, there really isn't a lot of answers. She was working on a case and she was uh, wrong place, wrong time. Yeah. But if she's coming back for something a little bit deeper to be like, okay, I understand my mom, wrong place, wrong time, got killed. But what was she working on that got her in this wrong place, wrong time? Like, why was it so dangerous that it turned into this? And that's where the Berlin stuff could be coming in. Yeah, it's going to be interesting how they write all this <laughs> in, because if they go to surface level, it's just going to feel bad. It's going to feel silly. It's going to feel like, okay, you, you just already lined it out. It's all kind of obvious. It's very anticlimactic sort of watching all of this back where we spent all summer talking about Sia and it's like, oh, all right, goodbye, Mira. Your death was handled like it was nothing, not important, yeah. not interesting. But yeah, if you find a way to tie this in to Reddington's work on the task force, if you mm -hmm. find a way to make Sia feel like Reddington is directly responsible on some <laughs> level for what happened, and, you know, he sort of becomes this sort of mythical big bad in her eyes, or at least somebody who she's craving more answers for, maybe, maybe it can work, but 
is the idea of another character going up the Reddington and being like, I want answers. Is that going to make anybody happy? No, it's not. <laughs> but, you know, she might want more answers on his own connections to Berlin and how it all sort of came together that ended with her mother's death. And that's maybe where Zoe might be able to come in. She's not really going to have the answers that Sia is looking for, but Sia doesn't know that. And yep. that might be a way that she could come back in. The problem is, is she's, you know, off living this other life, kind of in hiding. Zoe would have to have a very good reason to come out of, you know, the spot that she's in. And we, like, <laughs> Like Bad said, banging our heads yeah. against the table here, being like, How could she come out? Could there be some mother that's there? Or something like <laughs> yeah. it's just we're creating this whole story around Zoe and nothing none of it works. Yeah. It would have to be something like Wu Jing is just burning Reddington to the ground. So we know that he's got the Marvin list, and he's yeah. just like, I'm telling. Everybody is going to know yeah. that you are part of the FBI. You're an informant. You're working with the task force. I'm telling. Yeah. But then he might decide to go even further and be like, also, everyone that you've sent off to be safe, I'm pulling them out of safety. <laughs> so then it puts it in a situation where Reddington's like, okay, do I care enough about these people to get them back into some sort of safety while people are chasing me? It just causes such a chaotic, you know, complicated situation for him. And that's what the show is known for. But that's just my theory. So everybody put on your tinfoil <laughs> hats for that. And if you really enjoy the theories that we have going on at the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button yeah. because we are here all the way to the premiere in February talking about all kinds of theories. We're actually going to have our next video is going to yeah. be all the people from season one that are still alive after we've done this rewatch who have a very good chance of coming back. It feels obvious that people are going to be coming back. Yeah, that is that is the big fundamental theme of season 10. And that is why, you know, we have gone down the rabbit hole that we have with Zoe. Because I think in particular, a lot of what we're all kind of collectively thinking about here is how the Blacklist as a show is going to really work to sort of honor and represent its past. I mean, the reality is, is that, you know, she's probably not coming back for the ways in which you already sort of said where it's just like trying to find a realistic justification unless you bring in Wu Jing and he's got some sort of master plan the yeah the idea of Berlin's mother sort of not Berlin's but Zoe's mother kind of coming out there out of nowhere it's, there's too many complications we're basically writing fan fiction at a certain point yeah Zoe coming back has to do with either the task force Reddington yeah. or Wu Jing and if none of them see any use for her yeah. she's not coming she's not coming yeah. I think the the biggest biggest question we all have to sort of think about here is that if you are the writers of the blacklist how much effort do you want to put in to bring a certain character back like the amount of effort to bring in Zoe and sort of justify it versus <laughs> here's a blacklister from season three who is still alive they got out of prison. That, that's like so easy to write. And that's so e And you're also really asking people who are kind of casual viewers to sort of remember a lot when you're getting into the, like the minutia of like things that happened seven or eight years ago. It just may be just like a teeny tiny bit here too much. Maybe. I mean, <laughs> let's be honest here. We are all people who watch a show that is wildly complicated at times it likes to leave a lot out so that we are all down the hole like this talking about you know people that we haven't seen in 10 years and we all remember and we're all like yeah, yeah how do we thread this together it could come together in all kinds of ways there's been so many deep pulls on this show from you guys from us from the fandom that I, I think like the the real hardcore audience, which is a large portion of this audience, would see Zoe and be like, ooh, ooh, that's really an interesting pull. Like they did at the end of last season where Wu Jing showed up and we were like, oh my God, wow, why? Yeah. Holy smokes. Okay, so there's there's two other things from this episode that I just think are worth 
mentioning here at the end. First of all, if we ever want to have a big discussion about the distinction in the budget for season one versus season nine or season 10, they played a whole freaking Pearl Jam song at the end of the season one finale. I feel like that's like the cost of an actual season nine episode at yeah. this point. Also, okay, Reddington and the burn marks. Guess what, everybody? Reddington has burn marks on his back. This is a comment we have received two trillion times here at the channel. Remember Reddington and the burn marks. And we are here to tell you, yes, we remember Reddington and the burn marks that are on his back. Yes, we do. And, you know, he did explain that to Liz that knowing who her father is would put her in like huge danger yeah. sort of thing. And for me, uh, throughout, you know, the whole series and where we ended up with that, that didn't end up really being entirely true. She ended up getting killed because Townsend wanted Reddington to suffer and yeah. watch his, you know, watch someone who's like a daughter, you know, die in front of him. But that's, you know, is is that really what it is then? It didn't really connect to she figured out who Reddington was and now she's dead. It was more of Townsend being like, nah, I'm going to take someone that you care about and I can see that you care about her. Reddington's not always right. And I, I know that's hard. That's hard to say because we all love Reddington. That's okay. He's human. It's yeah. okay that he's not always right. If yeah. he was always right, he wouldn't be as relatable yes. to all of us and we wouldn't love him as much as we do. Yeah. Like he 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 misjudged some of that. And I think for a long time with the burn marks, we sort of all misjudged something because we all kind of assumed there were only maybe a couple <laughs> people there at the fire. But, you know, if we all remember back to, you know, the end of season nine, it seemed like there were maybe another couple of people there at that fire yeah. that we didn't really know about that we still barely know anything about. But I think this Reddington was at the fire. I'm just going to make that clear right now. So there's no other debates. However, the burn marks don't really mean a whole lot other than that. It doesn't mean that, you know, this is somehow the real Reddington, even though we've seemingly got proof that that guy's dead. You know, it doesn't matter. Nothing else really charts up other than that this Reddington was at the fire. Yeah, that's all that that really shares, you know. Is he really Katarina? Is he really Reddington? Is he the friend that brought over, you know, Liz to Sam to be like, oh, a friend of your father brought over you to Sam to be like, hey, you know, can you take this on sort of thing? And Sam being like, yeah, I will. I mean, that friend could have been at the fire. That friend could have been Reddington. Like, who who knows? Okay, well, we will be back to discuss blacklisters. We will also be back to discuss news whenever NBC wakes up from their coma and are like, we have the blacklist. We should actually start promoting this again. I assume that if they're going to promote it, it won't be till next year because it is coming so late in, you know, February. It's quite a ways off. It's still three months away, but... No promos like all last year. So I'm kind of expecting we're just going to be in the same boat. I'm going to send Dembe after you guys. If you don't start pushing this a little bit more. Do you want to mess with Dembe Zuma? Well, he's part of FBI now. So he's under a new set of rules. So I don't believe it. I don't believe it. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. We'll see you here next time.